of the servant leaders are able to um, watch this and view this. Um, so when Pastor Eric asked me to do tonight, I instantly was like, okay, I know I have to. I just had that feeling. <laughs> I need to do this. I kind of got out. I wiggled out of Mother's Day. He asked me to, to speak on Mother's Day. And then things like he was out of town or something the week before. So I'm like, you have to speak on Mother's Day because you were gone. So <laughs> I got out of that one. But um, when I asked him, I asked him a couple days ago, what, what could I talk about that would help you as a pastor? Because, um, you know, we traveled and evangelized before becoming pastors. And he would do that sometimes. Like he would ask the pastor of the church we were going to, you know, where are you? Where is your church? Like, how can I assist you in your leadership? Um, and that was always really meaningful to pastors. So I asked him and we started talking about it. And tonight is really going to be, I'm kind of preaching to the choir tonight. It's not necessarily for you who are sitting here as much as us as a, as a, a church body and the servant leadership base. So this will be posted in the servant leader page, and we're going to be encouraging all servant leaders to watch it um, because it's very meaningful for us as servant leaders. So um, everybody say, get out of the chicken coop. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So we're going to, I'm going to, I want this to be more conversational than just me up here talking. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to interact with me. So let's talk about chickens first. We're, we'll just start there before I say the next word. <laughs> We're going to talk about chickens. So I want you to throw out some characteristics to me of chickens. Ready, set, go. Who's going first? They make a lot of noise. That's a good one, Holly. They're tasty. <laughs> they get eaten. We'll go, we'll go with that one. They get eaten. <laughs> what else about chickens? They make a mess. Do chickens fly? <laughs> My sound man's up there participating. Thank you, by the way, Jaden, for doing sound tonight. Um, so chickens are, you know, I've, I've, my dad always called them dirty birds. <laughs> Because he's not a big chicken fan as far as food. So he would say, I don't want to eat dirty bird. Um, you just think of like chickens as kind of dirty. Like you said, messy, just flopping around a pen, kind of like, ugh, right? Yummy to eat, but ugh. Uh, so let's talk about eagles. What are some characteristics of eagles? They soar. What else? They hunt. That's good. What else? I think when I, when I see or think of an eagle, majestic, I, that's what I was going to, I was going to say powerful. Yeah. They're majestic. They're sort of like royal or something. They're beautiful. Yes. Um, so there's like a lot more value, I guess, on an eagle than a chicken, right? <laughs> um, so those are just some of the differences between the two. And in talking about those specific birds, we can talk about their habitat. So picture a chicken pen, right? Like you could, I'm sorry, but like, like our neighbor has chickens and my kids will go over there and get the eggs out of the chicken pen. And the neighbor gives them a dollar when they do that, like just to help her out. And I'm like, you could not pay me a hundred dollars to walk in that chicken pen. <laughs> I'm scared of them, first of all. They just, like, flop around all over the place, and it's gross. Um, so you just think, again, like a dirty area, right? A chicken pen, like, ugh. Um, and then if you think about an eagle's nest, right, like way up high in some majestic tree somewhere. We were in Ohio visiting family a couple summers ago, and we went out on a boat on Lake Tappan in Ohio. And my dad had been out on the water many times that summer and spotted an eagle flying, and they actually found his nest, like, way up in this tree. So he had me bring my camera and my big zoom lens, and we took pictures and everything. That nest, the size of that nest was, like, mind-bending. I mean, just huge and so meticulous, like, perfect. You know what I mean? Like, just neat and well thought through and put together. And um, so I want you to keep those two birds and their differences and the comparisons we've made in your mind. Um, we are going to, and I forgot to pull it up before I got up here, but I want you, if you brought your Bible, go to 1 Kings 10, 
1 through 13. And my phone won't get on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Julia, do you have that? Po- do you have your Bible? You want to read it for me? Oh, you can't get on either. The weather. I bet it's the weather. First Kings chapter 10. This is why Pastor Eric always says, bring your Bible to church. <laughs> the phone is not the Bible. Um, would you say I'm sorry? First Kings 10. Chapter 10, starting in verse 1. Wait, I might have it now. Okay. Mine won't do it. So, Julia, you want to read it for me? Yep. I'm going to give you the mic so that they can hear you. (laughs) Did you just get nervous? When the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions. Arriving at Jerusalem with a very great caravan, with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold, and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told me, in wisdom and wealth you have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be, how happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Thank you, Julia. (laughs) And Jaden's clapping for you up there. Yeah, that's good. That's actually I was going to read the NIV, which usually I go to King James. But um, so if you had to like say a word that describes sort of what pops out to you in that scripture, what would that word be? Like a descriptive word about that that little area of scripture. I have here's what I wrote down excellence. Everything she she came and had a picture in her mind, right? Based on what she had heard from others, she had a picture in her mind of what she was going to see when she got there. And the reality blew her mind, right? It was what she thought and more. It was excellent, top-notch professional, everything. Pastor Eric always uses the word order when he talks about that specific um, area of scripture. But excellence is the word that stands out to me. Um, So there are three, where we are as a church body, there are three words that God kind of dropped in my heart that could really help us, um, help us grow, I guess. We're at a place, you know, we hear Pastor Eric talk a lot about, like, we're sort of at a crossroads where um, it's, we're, we're ready, right? Like, it's time. It's time to grow. Um, so the first word that I have written down is ownership. Um, do we own the church? No. So I don't mean it literally like own the church, but is creative your church or are you creative? Because there's a difference. Is creative the church that you go to on Sundays? Is the church you attend? Or are you creative? Are you a part of the family of creative church? Are you, is it part of who you are? Does that make sense? So not just the place you go, but is it part of who you are? The people in Solomon's courts were, um, 
the scripture talks about how they were thankful for what God had done with Solomon. They took ownership of that. You know what I mean? Like when the, the queen came and she saw all of them, it wasn't just a bunch of like people who were there and doing this or that. They were as one in order. They had taken ownership of the courts, right? Like this is where we are meant to be kind of thing. This is part of us. Um, so taking ownership of your church, what does that look like, right? Well, obviously, if we just attend church on Sunday, we come to church on Sunday, and you're going to get about that much out of the church that you attend, whether that's here or somewhere else, right? You're going to get a good message, get to say hi to a few friends, and go home. But when you really take ownership and you become part of that body and you allow that body to become part of you, you are getting a family, right? You are you are gaining so much more, and you're you're planting your roots like down deep and wide, and that's what God intends for us to do. So, number one, ownership. Number two, branding. This sounds like I am in a business office somewhere <laughs> giving like a marketing spiel, but that's not. I don't want you to think of it like. Um, practically what the word means branding but I'm in the business that I do um, you have an option basically when you sign up you can just kind of do it as a hobby post pictures of the products that you sell hope that you get a few sales and make a few extra dollars right or you can become the face of that product so if all I ever do is post pictures of a tube of mascara I'm going to sell a few right but I'm not going to like blow any records People want to see me as a person. They want to see who I am. So we're trained in my business to attract people to our life, to post things, put yourself out there, put your family out there, um, put your life out there, be more than just a product. Attract people to your life and build relationships. When you do that, people naturally want your product. So it's sort of a win-win situation. Um, so forget about my business, but sort of the same thing with the church. Sometimes we travel out, you know, and go to other churches or bigger churches or whatever. And you, every once in a while, you go to a church that you walk in. And one that comes to my mind is Abba's house that pastor, you know, Ron Phillips raised up and now pastor Ronnie Jr. is the pastor there. It is like, I don't know how to explain it. Like you walk in and it's just everything is Abba's house. Like it, it's just all everybody, not that everybody looks alike, but it's like you know where you are when you're there. You know what I mean? It's like this is Abba's house. And I mean from T-shirts to bumper stickers to whatever, like they are one and they are going after the vision. Um, the people in Solomon's courts I bet they were not just wearing like anything, right? Like they were wearing Solomon's robes and meaning that it was obvious who they were and where they belonged. So as far as we go as a church, branding, like some ideas, logistical ideas. We've had bumper stickers before, right? But um, who are we as a church? That comes from the vision that God has given the leader who is Pastor Eric, right? We all know the vision. We all have heard the vision, um, it's been made clear to us as a church body. But what are we doing about that vision? If we really branded ourselves, in a sense, as creative church, we put the vision out there and we all, as a body, ran with that vision, think what that would do and where we could be. And see, now, a lot of times, people, you want to attract them to Jesus, obviously. That's the obvious. But a lot of times the avenue to get them to Jesus is by attracting them to a place, a church, a person, a ministry, an outreach, you know, whatever that may be. So making it attractive, that's really what branding um, would be about. Number three is marketing. What would be marketing church-related? Social media. This is a big one. Courtney can shout amen from back there. <laughs> so we as creative, again, if you just come to church, that's one thing. But if you are creative and this is your family, when something is posted, no matter if it's Courtney, Terry, Pastor Eric, um, who else, Encia, 
whoever would put Pastor David would post things, right? It might be an advertisement for a Wednesday night. It might be VBS. It might be um, a graphic Pastor Eric makes about text to give. The lives from Sunday mornings. We need, and I'm guilty of this, like I need to be more aware of it. We need to be sharing it, right? It's so easy, y'all. You just click that little share button. That's it. Like, boom, you're done. It takes half a second, and you know what you're doing? The world is at your fingertips, on your cell phone or computer or whatever. Like, I'll give you this to put into perspective. My, for the business that I have, I have grown a lot over the past couple of years, and 90%, I did the statistics one day, 90% of my customers do not live anywhere near me, and I've never met them before. I befriended them on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, social media, they started to get to know me, and I started to get to know them just by sharing my life on Facebook and posting and whatever, and eventually they became customers. So this is a powerful thing, and that's why what Courtney and what Terry do back there with um, live stream is so, so important. Every single Sunday, people watch that don't live here, <laughs> that don't go to creative, and we're reaching souls we don't even realize it you know but we could reach so so many more imagine if all of us say if there's a hundred people here on a Sunday morning say 95 shared the live video think about all those people that are now seeing that video or being reached versus just the hundred people that are here in church right so sharing everything that is posted that is getting your church out there. It's making a way. It's making a way for God to do bigger things in your church. Um, so we, ha- we already know we don't create an image of what the church is. It's already, cr- it's already here, right? Some things that I'll ask you, what, what are things that describe your church? Like if you were to describe your church to somebody, throw out some words to me. Loving. That is like the first thing everybody says. Loving. What else? Close-knit. What else? Friendly. You were going to say her word? (laughs) Friendly. Um, Yeah, that. Like, And I feel like when people come and visit, 90% of the time that's what they say. Oh, my gosh, this is the most loving church I've ever been to. Right? So that's who we are. That's, That's one aspect of who we are. Some things that I think of life-giving, um, spirit-filled, charismatic, lively, um, what would be the word, like many colors, all denom- or all races, all ages, all ethnicities, diverse, yes. Um, so those are some words that describe who we are as a church, but we have to get that out there, right? We have to portray that. So we're in a building in Hardyville, You know, and that's what people know. Like they know, oh, Creative Church, they're in that building out there in Hardyville. But what are we promoting beyond the four walls of the church? What is the image that we are giving off? Are you sharing what your church is to other people? And again, I'm not talking just to you guys here. (laughs) We're just saying, you know, everyone as a church body. Are we sharing who we are as a church? Think about what these three things ownership, branding, marketing would do with our finances as a church. And I want to ask you, again, not you, but all of us as as a church body, are we content with the way things are? Are we content with the size that we are, with the amount of people that come here? Are we content with the youth group being what it is? Are we content with the kids' church being what it is? Are we content with that building just sitting out there basically rotting, like being useless? <laughs> Are we content with the grass growing up through cracks in the parking lot? No, we're not, right? And we shouldn't be. But I will say this, from all the years of church going and traveling and, you know, us um, evangelizing in other churches, contentedness, comfort, complacency, that is the number one death wish to every pastor's vision. So forget that I'm Pastor Eric's wife, right? He's the man that God placed here and gave the vision to. And if it were someone else, I would say the same thing. Um, 
we as a church body are responsible for upgirding that and for getting behind that and adopting it and running with it, right? So if we are just content and we're just happy the way things are, we're, we're basically like giving the kiss of death to that vision. We have to be uncomfortable in a, in a good way. We have to get to where, okay, like this is great. We've been blessed. God is so good to us. We, have, we are so blessed here at Creative Church. But guys, there's more. <laughs> there is more. And God didn't put us here on this property and bless us like he did with this property um, for us to just stay the way it is. Like he, God has plans for us as a church, but he's waiting on us to realize that and to walk with it. Um, so imagine where we could be and Julia can testify, where would we be if our finances doubled or tripled or quadrupled? What could we do? Like, where could we be? Who could we be reaching? What outreaches could we be doing? Like, there's so, the the list is endless of, you know, things that money would provide for us to be able to do. How can they double? How can they triple? How can they quadruple so that we can advance the kingdom of God? Um, Obviously, by tithing. We need to be tithing. We need to be tithing. I've tithed since I was a child. My parents taught me 10%. My pap gave me a dollar. I tithed 10%. If he gave me $20 for a report card, 10% went in the offering at Kids Church. Um, And we've just always done that, and God's always provided, and he's always blessed us. But I'll give you this quick testimony, and I'm not going to say who it is because I want this person to share it on Sunday morning if they will. But someone texted me this week and said, Pastor Lindsay, you're not going to believe this. I'm so blessed. I'm so blown away. When I was attending another church before I found Creative, they were closing down on their very last Sunday, and the pastor talked about giving because the light bill needed paid before they were completely, you know, shut down as a church. And that was the first time that I'd ever hear, heard him teach on giving. So she had been going to church for X, Y, Z amount of time and never heard him teach on giving. But the church was closing down because they could not afford to stay open any longer. And she gave that day, and she tithed her 10%. And then even when she started Creative Church, she tithed her 10%. And it was a certain dollar amount of what she made every week. Here we are eight years later, fast forward, or seven or eight years later. And this person is now, um, their tithe now, their 10% tithe now, is what they were making back then. So that person grabbed a hold of that word about giving, and she said, thank you and Pastor Eric for teaching us the principle of giving, of tithing, because, like, look what it's done in our life. And so that's, that's just the reality. That's tithing. God honors it. He blesses it. Giving above and beyond our tithe is huge. Pastor always says the 10% is what's required of us. That's what God tells us to do. But anything you give above and beyond, that's what's blessable. That's where God says okay, like an extra blessings coming your way, you know? Um, so we've always done that, and God's always blessed it. Giving our time and our effort. So not just in servanthood, like being a greeter in kids' church. These are all great ways to give. But also just in your thought process, like just from Monday to Friday, this, and, and we talk about this a lot, we lose ground as a church a lot in the Monday to Friday, or Monday to Saturday, where people come to church on Sunday and they go home. They don't think about the church or talk about the church or anything until Saturday night when they get their church clothes ready for Sunday morning, right? So that Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, having your church, that's a big part of your life or should be, on your mind, on your heart, on your lips, talking to people about it, on your Facebook, sharing about it, those kinds of things that time, giving your time, Um, and spreading on social media, like I mentioned, that is just a huge one. And I know if you're, you know, a certain age and older, (laughs) you might not think 
of social media as being all that important. And it, trust me, social media has its negatives, like legitimately has its negatives. But again, it puts the world at your fingertips. And as a church, in the last days, it's an avenue to reach people and to progress the, the kingdom of God. So giving in those ways is how we can see finances quadruple. Pastor Eric made a graphic this past week that was the text to give number. And I think he wrote up about VBS and how it was coming up and, you know, whatever. If we all sort of saw that graphic, took it and ran with it and shared it and said, oh my gosh, my church is doing vacation Bible school, you know, blah, 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 blah. That would certainly help the cause. It would certainly help pastor, you know, kind of pull that wagon and start to see more funds come into the church to be able to do these things. So a thought that he preaches and talks about a lot, his house over our house, right? As women, especially, we are, you know, stewards of our home. I am constantly thinking what needs done in the house. This room needs clean. That toilet needs scrubbed. <laughs> um, you know, Eric's thinking he's planting flowers outside today. Like we're con- you're constantly doing things for your home, right? Um, but his home, his house, this house <laughs> is technically, biblically supposed to come before our house. So um, we need to always keep that at the forefront. Ways we can do that. When we see something that needs done or fixed, that could be something as small as a piece of trash that needs picked up off the floor or as big as you pull in the parking lot and see whatever, trash out on the field or a garbage can with the lid up or a um, shingle off the roof, whatever. You know, you spot something. First of all, we need awareness about our house, our church house, to notice these things, but would we see them? not to wait on someone else to do it (laughs) or someone else to dream up a plan to get it done. If you see something, take initiative and get her done, (laughs) get her done, you know, or come to pastor and say, hey, I noticed blah, blah, blah. What can we do to fix that? Um, An example, how many have noticed the door like during church on Sundays? Boom. Boom. Boom, it like clangs shut, boom, <laughs> while he's preaching or we're in the altar or whatever. Someone came to him and said, Pastor Eric, can I please fix that door so it won't clang shut while you're preaching? <laughs> Just things like that, you know, little things that make a difference and impact. And these are all things that sort of add up on Pastor's plate or Julia's plate or Pastor David's plate. Um, that really could be helped by just as a church body, all of us being aware and open-minded and having our eyes open when we come on the property. Um, picking up that little piece of trash on the floor or straightening chairs or putting tithe envelopes in the back seat, back um, seat pockets or cleaning up the kitchen after an event or coming by and pulling weeds out of the parking lot, (laughs) whatever it may be, spraying Roundup. Um, All of these things are just as important as the person in the sound booth or the person running kids' church or the person in the pulpit or whatever, you know. it's These are all things that work together to make our courts excellent and flow together. Um, The biggest thing is I think that a lot of times people – want to help, like in church, not just our church, just generally, like they go to a church, they want to help, and they might think, oh, I have this idea about that that could make this better, or whatever, but they kind of don't know how, or they don't know that they can, you know what I mean? Like they may see something that's broken, and they don't know that they can just take the initiative to fix it, or whatever, Um, so that would be a big thing is not waiting to be told just we're a family this is our house this is our church house let's work together get it done right um so the last thing i wrote down is let's make this an eagle's nest not a chicken pen (laughs) so you know just order working together flowing together getting behind the vision getting it putting it out there putting it out there i think a lot of times like I'll I'll use um, Pastor David even as an example. Um, You can't put into words 
the work that he puts in to say Wednesday nights. And I know Julia could testify to that. The effort that it takes to do a series on Wednesday nights, especially for him because he's a perfectionist and he's a planner and he takes time. Like he takes it very serious, which is amazing. Um, or, or even like scheduling, think the, the different things that he does, the effort that it takes to, to do these things is insurmountable, like deserves to be paid a lot of money to do it, but he does it out of the goodness of his heart. But how much more meaningful would it be if we click that share button on Wednesday nights, right? And we said, you know what, I'm going to share this on my Facebook because somebody on my friends list they need to hear what I just heard from Pastor David or Pastor Eric or Brian or Pastor Matt, you know, whoever it is. Um, Things like that. Or Pastor Eric takes the time and the effort to make a graphic about text to give. Well, if he's the only one that shares it, it's not going very far. (laughs) You know, like we have to help and get behind the the, um, mission. So Anyway, we are very blessed here as a church. Like we really are. We are blessed in every area. We are blessed mainly with the spirit of God that is here, like the life that flows in this building. We're blessed with the people, the amazing people. We're blessed with the servant leader base, the fact that we have so many people who are on that servant leader list. Um, We're blessed with the fact that we have that diversity. Every church doesn't have that. And we're thankful, like as pastors, we're so thankful for that. Um, We're blessed financially. Like, There's never a time that God doesn't provide, is there, Julia? (laughs) He always provides, like always. Sometimes when it on paper doesn't look like it's happening, but always does. He always provides. And that's just God honoring us as the church, you know, and our faith and everything. So we're very blessed. But, you know, no church is perfect. And there's always room for improvement. We can always do better at this or that. But the, the biggest thing point of everything I'm saying tonight is we are so blessed. Why would we want to keep this to ourselves, right? Why would we want to just stay the way we are and keep it the way we are? We want to share it. We want to get it out there. We want more people to come to be blessed and to be a part of this body, to feel the love that we have here. Um, So these are just ways that as a servant leader based team, we can sort of aid in that process, I guess, and start to see some growth. If we just do what we've always done, we'll get the results we've always gotten, right? We have to do things, something different if we want to see something different. So um, just awareness, making note of things, carrying the vision, running with it, see a graphic, someone post, share it share the live videos, get the word out there, invite people to church. That's a big one (laughs) that I should have already said. Um, If you have something great, you want to share it. So that's where we are. And um, we know it's coming. We know it's happening. Growth. That's what's been, you know, the pastor did that whole series about the growth and everything. And we know it's coming. It is. So these are ways that we can work together as a servant leadership team. And thanks for watching tonight. If you watched live servant leaders, make sure you watch the whole thing. And Courtney, um, I'm done. So you can go ahead and end the live and the recording, but we're going to have some prayer together. So if you guys will come forward, Jaden, you can put some music on just like softly. You got it. He's ready and waiting. He does media 